Good evening, everyone. The 52nd annual Escanaba Football Clinic for coaches saw a couple dozen head coaches and assistants from the UP converge at the Terrace Bay Inn in Delta County. After the coaches were able to socialize for a minute, it was down to business. First up, Ishpeming's Jeff Olson and Scott Sergula, followed by West Iron County's Mike Baruti. Their teams have met three out of the last four years in the playoffs, so they gave their fellow colleagues tips on how they prepare for the postseason. Menominee's Joe Noah re session revolved around nurturing and cultivating the football program during the offseason and offensive line play. For some coaches, it was an opportunity to talk X's and O's with other coaches from different conferences, but mostly it was all about brotherhood that they share. It's a great clinic because um, during the season it's very competitive and we're, we get after each other quite a bit, but when we get in an environment where we share information, um, it's a great fraternity of guys and um, we share a lot of information and a uh, little jostling going back and forth too, and it, it's just a good time. And talking to all the different coaches around the UP, it, it, it's something special, it's something I look forward to. It's, uh, you know, you get that camaraderie of, you know, we're all in the same business together, we all work, we're extremely hard, all passionate about what we do in football, so it's good to, good to communicate with uh, all the other coaches. NMU receivers coach Marcus Knight capped off the evening by talking about receiver drills and pattern running techniques. The event was organized by new NMU assistant football coach Dan Flynn. Good weather means you can make some long road trips in order to play softball games, and Hancock did that today, a nice drive to Rapid River for a double header. We'll pick up the action in game number two between the Rockets and Bulldogs. Rapid River took the first game 15 to two in five innings. Erica Schwartz had a very nice day in the circle. Defense helps out here. Dominique Pavlot makes the catch in the outfield and gets the double play at second base to end the top half of the first. Now the Rockets in the batter's box and that's a base knock by Hannah Canyon and two runs will score on the play and the Rockets are up by a pair. The sixth graders had a chance to take a little break during recess to watch some of the action from Rapid River. Rockets drove in three in the second, top three. Schwartz went one, two, three, striking out all three Bulldogs batters. Home team erupted for four more in the third. Pavlat at the bat, and this one is the center field. Oh, just off her glove. Riley Hubert would score, and the Rockets would get the sweep, taking game two and five innings, 10 to nothing. Meanwhile, Marquette entertaining Superior Central. Oh, Amanda, Amanda Gray, born in the UP, takes one on the noggin. And the Redettes that are already on the board. A couple batters later, Sydney Cornock, the base hit. The ball actually bounced off second base. That's why it took a while to get to the outfield. Gray scored, runners to second and third. Rachel Sean will also go up the middle with a solid single. And two more runs would cross the plate and Marquette was rolling quite nicely. Brooke Hool was up next, and Brooke is gonna hit another hard grounder to first. That one bounced off the glove of the first baseman. Hool was safe, Autumn Isop scored. Courtney Finkbeiner followed that a short time later with a two-run triple, and Marquette went into double digits in the first inning and cruised to the victory 18 to nothing. Today marks the three-year anniversary since the Lake Superior State softball team played a game at home. They were scheduled to host Lake Erie today in Ashland tomorrow, but the weather from earlier this week said, no, I don't think that's going to happen. So the Lakers are in Ohio playing the Dragons and Eagles. Despite all this adversity, the LSSU softball squad has the best team grade point average at the school. Fifth-year head coach Lori Shimasaki calculated that during the last four weeks of the 2015 season, her team has spent 100 hours on buses and 11 days in class. The Lakers' idea of traveling in style, a 25-passenger bus with Wi-Fi, tables, and electric outlets that allow for quality study time. Last week, they received the Laker Club Award for boasting a team GPA of 3.21. Nagani's Brandy Anderson and Munin Sings Amanda Maxson are two of the four seniors on that team. Maxson led the GLIAC in batting at 476 before suffering an injury last week at Wayne State. The Lakers split that doubleheader with Lake Erie today, winning 6-0. 6-2 and losing 6-0. Anderson was the losing pitcher, but all the runs were unearned. Let's go to high school baseball at Scanaba, crossing the border in Wisconsin, taking on Beloit. 
Louis Ostrander with a base hit in the sixth inning. Escanaba down four to three at this point, but things would change after another hit and a walk that tied the game at four. Sean Bissell with the base hit. That's going to get a run home, and the Eskimos have a 5-4 lead, and the orange and black not done by any means. Brandon Punzel, the single to left field. That's going to play two, and the Eskimos have a 7-4 lead. Logan Lamb would keep that going, and he's going to get a hit to plate another one. And Escanaba went on to win this one by the score of 10 to 5. They have another game at a tournament down there tomorrow. Lake Superior State golfer has been named to the all GLIAC first team. Senior Doug Piesco is from Oxford High School in the Lower Peninsula. He's one of seven players named to the first team. And MU sophomore Emil Lundgren received honorable mention. Meanwhile, the LSSU women's golf team is at the GLIAC Championships in Finley, Ohio. Lakers were in ninth place after one round. Antonagin's Hallie Borseth is tied for second on her team. She had an 89 today. Grand Valley State is the team leader. And don't forget, all kinds of information is available on our website at UppermichiganSource.com. The Cubs win in extra, extra innings, innings. Seven to three in 11 innings. Congratulations. That never would have happened last year. No, so definitely not. Yes. You can thank Joe Madden. You're welcome. <laughs> we gave him to you. <laughs> all right, thanks.